Welcome. Today we have another fantastic fossil to check out. This is a Triceratops post-orbital horn core. So this is just absolutely amazing. I mean, check out this thing. So this is our gigantic horn and it's on top of our Triceratops. So this comes from Triceratops horridus, which is um, one of our Ornithischian dinosaurs. It falls into the Gemisaurias, who are cheek dinosaurs, Seropoda, Marginocephalian. Remember, these have big frills covering the backs of their necks. And it's ultimately a member of Ceratopsia, which means horn face. I mean, how fantastic is this name? Um, so Triceratops horridus, um, is, this one is from the Lance Formation down in Wyoming from the late Cretaceous, um, so kind of think end Cretaceous about 66 million years ago. Um, this dinosaur was named in 1889 by Marsh and it is so well named. So Triceratops has three horns. These are post orbitals. Um, so they're a modification of the post orbital bone um, and they stick outwards up off of their faces. So kind of imagine me checking out and then I would have two of them and then one off my the tip of my nose to give me three horns. So moving kind of around here. Uh, in Triceratops, these uh, horn cores were big. They could be up to a meter in length um, and they were covered in a sheath of keratin. So keratin is a protein just like our hair and our fingernails uh, that would cover over the top and actually make these horns much bigger uh, than we see today in the, the fossil record. So the question, ultimately, what is so fantastic about having this big horn? And again, remember, these are going to hang out off of my head. I'm going to have two of them. Actually, one on my nose. What are these for? Okay, so just check it out. Um, originally, the first hypothesis was if you were a dinosaur and you had these big, huge pokes coming off the front of your head, these would be really great tools for defense protection. So this is an interspecies interaction. Uh, specifically thought that maybe the Triceratops was intimidating or even finding the theropods that were roaming around at the time. So those are our big meat eaters. So that's an interesting idea. Uh, you know, maybe I guess the first thing we assume if I've got big pokey things, it's to fight with. Um, but ultimately, they're just on the front of the head. And when we start to look at the dinosaurs, there's a lot of differences in what we see. So um, if it's a good tool, I don't know, maybe it's there, maybe not. Uh, but there are some other hypotheses that our paleontologists have proposed. Uh, one of those relates to thermoregulation, so controlling the body temperature. And if you notice, this is not a perfectly smooth bone. Uh, this has vascular tissue um, and again was covered with keratin. Um, it's got a large surface area and so it was thought that it could allow the dinosaurs to cool off or to warm up uh, from the environment. Um, so that I hypothesis was put out there. Um, but when we look at all of our ceratopsians, there's a lot of variation in what we see. They don't all just have the two uh, post-orbital horns off the top. Uh, there are variations between the different species. So the thought is, if this was a really good tool for thermoregulation, why exactly are they different species to species? And also, we have a lot of evidence for what little baby Triceratops looks like. And when they're babies, they don't have these horns. Um, so then the question is, why wouldn't the babies have the horns if they were needed for thermoregulation? So that's kind of been put out there as a second hypothesis. Now the third hypothesis I find truly fascinating and that actually has to do with interspecies signaling. So communication between individuals of the same species. So basically we're saying, I've got these big horns on my head, like check me out. So this is for recognition within um, your own community. So members of your own species and potentially for competition uh, for mates and territory. So so competition between two members of the same species duking it out to figure out who is going to get access to the mates and who is going to be taken over the territory. So this idea has lots of evidence behind it. We can look at modern animals today like our bighorn sheep with their big huge horns and the males will kind of fight each other out to figure out who is going to get access to the females uh, for that year. 
Um, other evidence for um, our ceratopsians is the fact that they have different configurations depending on which species they are. So what works in one group is going to be more attractive for that species than what works in another group. And so just the fact that we can identify our ceratopsians by these differences in their horn configurations and their frills suggests that it was used for recognition within the species. There are also ontogenic differences, so differences in what our Triceratops looked like from the moment it hatched out of its egg to when it grew up to be, you know, um, an adult ready for finding a mate. Um, so the fact that our little tiny uh, Triceratops didn't have those horns would suggest that they didn't need them. They weren't out looking for mates as babies, they only do that when they get older. And then the last thing is we have found um, big extensive bone beds of multiple individuals from the same herd moving together in these big extensive bone beds. And when they start looking at the frills of these different triceratops, they find that they actually have wounds on their frills, which would suggest that the triceratops were locking horns and fighting between them. So when they match up the holes and the frills and the location, it shows that they were going head to head and probably duking it out to try to figure out who would either get access to the mates or the territory. Um, so that really leads to this idea that the reason our Triceratops had these amazing horns was to be recognized within their species. Uh, so whether it was, you know, just say, hey, check me out, see me over here, or to use those horns to fight amongst themselves for access to territory or mates uh, is the kind of leading hypothesis for that purpose. So I hope you had fun checking out this Triceratops horn. Um, I wish you a day full of fun and happy learning.